from Iron Man's unexplained secrets to Ant-Man's fears about Kang. Here's how the MCU could finally crack the case of the biggest Iron Man mystery, starting with how Iron Man left behind certain secrets that have yet to be explained. My name is Tony Stark and I'm not afraid of you. I know you're a coward. So I've decided that you just died, pal. I'm gonna come get the body. There's no politics here, it's just good old-fashioned revenge. One of the largest riddles can ultimately be solved in the multiverse saga. Let's face it, Iron Man was the first superhero in what's now known as the MCU. He led the original Avengers team alongside Captain America. That's why he was a big part of how this connected world came to be, and why he's a part of all the mysteries that fans want to solve. Big man in a suit of armor. Take that off, what are you? Genius billionaire playboy philanthropist. But Iron Man's history in the MCU also left a lot of questions unanswered while he was still living. So now Marvel has to figure out how to answer them. When they come, and they will, they'll come for you. I have an army. We have a Hulk. The truth is, He basically transformed a cluster of high-rise buildings in Manhattan called Stark Tower into the team's main headquarters and renamed it Avengers Tower. But after the events of Avengers Age of Ultron, the Avengers moved to the Avengers Compound. That's what led to the next mystery about the place. Cause you see, it was mentioned in passing that Tony had sold Avengers Tower, but we never discovered who bought it until Loki. However, thanks to an Easter egg in the TV show Loki, and with the introduction of Kang the Conqueror and his different versions, we can finally figure out who bought the Avengers Tower. But it's a lot more tricky than I thought it'd be. It's possible that one Kang variant could have bought the tower from Tony Stark. This is made even more complicated the more you look at Loki was a big part of how the multiverse and many of its ideas came to be. The God of Mischief and his variant Sylvie went against the Time Variant's authority. And that's when the biggest mystery about Iron Man was finally revealed. Uh, let's just not come in tomorrow. Let's just take a day. Have you ever tried shawarma? Huh? There's a shawarma joint about two blocks from here. I don't know what it is, but I want to try it. We're not finished yet. In fact, at one point, the TVA cut Loki down and even sent him into the Void. Now, in case you didn't know, the Void is a location at the end of time where the TVA sent everything they cut down. Alioth watches over this place. The Void was full of Easter eggs because it had things and places from other realities. For example, Avengers Tower was in the Void, but it was called Kang Tower. Now, keep that name in mind because it's important for what comes next. In the comics, Kang Enterprises owns Kang Tower because they buy Avengers Tower from Stark Industry. That means Mr. Griffin's the CEO of Kang Enterprises. He's one of Kang's many various forms. Because of a glitch in the time stream, he was split into different copies of himself, and one of those versions was stuck in the early 21st century. Richards built his own dynasty and became the CEO of Kang Enterprises under the name Mr. Griffin. Now, Mr. Griffin's briefly seen in Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania's mid credit sequence with the Council of Kang. Even though his timeline was cut, he could have ended up in the main one and bought Avengers Tower. And there are good reasons to see this connection if we look at what we know so far. Cause the MCU has told us quite a lot about Avengers Tower. You see, Stark Industries bought this high-rise building complex to make it into the first skyscraper in Manhattan that used only clean energy. They did this by adding an arc reactor. After the Chitauri attack in the Avengers and the establishment of the team, Tony turned Stark Tower into the Avengers headquarters and made it fit the needs of each member. But when Ultron attacked, Tony moved the team to the Avengers compound. He sold Stark Tower in 2015, and the new owner preserved the tower's look with the Avengers emblem on it for a couple of years. By the summer of 2024, the skyscraper had gone through a major renovation and remodeling, and it now included a lounge and garden area right in the middle. But the MCU had hasn't said who acquired Avengers Tower. Some theories point to Norman Osborn and Reed Richard, but the real answer might be a lot more difficult. The purchase of the tower might seem unimportant at first, but it ties in together for the bigger picture. I mean, if Mr. Griffin bought the Avengers Tower, it would be a huge reveal for Avengers 5 and 6. Officially, Marvel hasn't said who bought Avengers Tower yet. This could be because a dramatic bombshells planned for Avengers The Kang Dynasty, Ant-Man and the Wasp.
Wasp Quantumania's after credit sequence suggested that Kang's versions are getting ready to assault the Avengers and other groups. It would be stunning if the present superheroes found out that a Kang variant had been watching them all along. Mr. Griffin and his many different forms could become one of the most dangerous opponents the Avengers and their allies can face on Earth. This is especially true now that Mr. Griffin's part of a wider plot along with all of his other forms. Mr. Griffin's presence would mean that Avengers the Kang Dynasty or Avengers Secret Wars would have to explain why Griffin's other timeline was cut. This may make him seem even more dangerous and cunning. So I fibbed. I fibbed earlier when I said I know how everything is going to go. The mystery isn't all that haunts Iron Man, though. There are bigger fears at hand, and they resemble an older time in his life. Fears about Kang and Ant-Man are like Iron Man's nightmares of Thanos. At the end of Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania, Team Ant-Man triumphs. As Scott gets back to his former pattern, things seem to be back to normal. Even still, his narration shows the terrible truth. Kang's threats about knowing what's coming keep him up at night. Scott understands that they won, but he can't shake the sensation that the war isn't done. In the Avengers, this is exactly how Iron Man felt after the Battle of New York, and he almost died in that one. Tony Stark discovered that they had prevailed, but he had a feeling that a bigger threat was approaching. What's interesting now is how Ant-Man will handle this rising fear. Iron Man tried to ignore it until he was so scared that he started working like crazy to protect the people he cared about, all from an unknown threat he thought was coming. Even though he tried to deal with it in Iron Man 3, it still bothered him. That's why he made Ultron and supported the Sokovia Accords merely to keep the Avengers together. The best thing for Scott to do is to talk to his other heroes and tell them what he learned in the Quantum Realm. This way, he can get ready for a possible new fight. But there's one major difference this time around, and it has to do with the risk involved in this one. Iron Man's fears about Kang. It looks like this next guy's way more scared of Kang than even Tony Stark. Ant-Man's fears about Kang are far worse than Iron Man's. Given what he just went through in the MCU's Quantum Realm, Ant-Man may be more afraid than Iron Iron Man. There's good reason why, and it's got something to do with the people he loves. After Pepper Potts almost dies in Iron Man 3, she not only survives the ordeal against Aldrich Killian, but she was also spared in Thanos' decimation. In Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania, it's obvious that he immediately regrets spending so little time with Cassie Lang. Scott was also close to losing her since Kang the Conqueror was holding her as a captive. He now knows how dangerous it is to work with the bad guy, which is why Kang's return could be a big threat to his happiness and safety. With that, that's all for how the MCU finally cracked the case of the biggest Iron Man mystery.